and welcome back to my page. I am so happy to be back. I wanted to come here to kind of talk about where I've been, how things have been, how I've evolved through this journey and what's up now. It's been over a year and a half now that I've been all in. What are my thoughts on it right now? Well, I don't even really associate with the all-in term anymore because I just feel like I've been living my life, eating very intuitively. I don't binge or anything at all because I give myself permission to literally eat whatever I want. Through time, my hunger hormones have become so much more regulated. I know when I'm hungry and I know when I'm full. I know when I'm thirsty versus when I'm hungry. I know that at the beginning for me that was challenging to know, is this just like thirst? Is it hunger? Because I had taught myself that when I was hungry, I would just drink water to like kind of cut that hunger, but that's obviously not what your body's telling you. I mean, on a food perspective, I feel like I've never had a more balanced outlook on food. I see everything as pretty much equal. There's nothing that I feel like I can't have, whether that's like dairy, gluten, I have no restrictions whatsoever. I think that now it's more a question of what makes me feel good. So I know I could eat a whole cake if I wanted to, but I know it won't make me feel good, so I don't want to. Through this journey, I've really learned that there's no reason to be guilty about food in any manner. How I look at it now, rather than being guilty for something that I ate that didn't make me feel great, for example, is just to take that as a piece of information that I'm gonna use in the future. So every mishap, and I don't even wanna call it that, but anything that makes you feel kind of crummy, just take it as a piece of information that you'll be able to use in the future. So be grateful for that because you're just learning through it. Every experience is a good one. Just learn from them and take them as data that you can then use while you eat in the future. That mentality of guilt has really shifted for me in that aspect. I don't feel guilt at all when I eat. I don't feel like I need to train harder. The only thing that I feel is just like, oh, that didn't make me feel great. I don't feel great right now. So I might just like drink more water or <laughs> take a short walk just because it's gonna help me digest, not because I wanna burn off calories. So I think it's a very intuitive way of living now. Um, especially with working out there's some weeks that I go to the gym four times and there are some weeks like this week that I think I went once and I might go today if I want to and that's something I'm really proud of because I was unable to do that before it was so hard for me to skip a day because I was just I don't know if that's how I coped with my stress and I didn't have other tools to resort to. So I would just go to the gym to kind of like forget things or to clear my head, which it still does really help me clear my head. It's great for my mental health that I can definitely say, but um, it's not the only tool that I have now. I have other ones to help me de-stress. And if there's a day that I don't want to do it, like let's say I started my workout and I'm not into it, I'll just leave. That's kind of what I've been doing and that's how things have been since the last time I made a video um, in regards to my weight, because I guess some people are curious about that. I've definitely lost weight, that's for sure. It hasn't been intentional. I just think that through time, since I am more active now, I'm going to work physically every day. Um, not just online at home, so I do walk more, I am up and about, and I'm going to the gym maybe, let's say on average, two to three times a week. Naturally, my set point weight is easier to find since I am helping my body to get there in a certain way, but that's just with time. Like, I don't think I could have done it earlier. It's just the puffiness went down, and now I look back at videos, and it's just crazy to see how inflamed my body was um i wanted to answer a few questions as well as i'm here and please keep them coming you know if you have more questions just drop them down below in the comment section it's my pleasure to answer them one of the questions that came back a lot was if i experienced extreme hunger and yes absolutely i would say the three to four first months were really intense i was just so hungry i could eat anything in sight and that lasted a long time and I put on a lot of weight. I was restricted for such a long time that I'm not surprised at all that my body wanted to compensate by putting in that mechanism to make me just eat large, large quantities. I can't even imagine eating what I used to eat in the beginning because 
I just could not have that kind of hunger anymore. I just don't. And um, yeah, so absolutely, I absolutely had extreme hunger in the beginning. Something that helped me a lot as well was to really listen not only to my physical hunger cues, but also my mental ones because restriction isn't just physical, it, a lot of it, it actually starts from the mental aspect of it. And this still applies now, as soon as I think about food, I eat. I don't ask myself three times, do you want it, do you not want it, I just eat it. If I'm thinking about it, if I think I want it, I'll have it, and that's something that I'm continuously doing to this day, is not to question whether I want it or not. If I think I want it, I'll, I'll have it, and like that, it stops all questions needed, and I'm sure that in that light, I won't be restricting. So another question that I got was, did you experience any symptoms like brain fog, extreme fatigue, no motivation, mood swings, etc., when you were underweight? Yes, absolutely. Um, I was extremely tired. That, I mean, it goes to say that when you're not eating enough, you just don't have energy. Yes, mood swings absolutely i was a completely different person in terms of just my mood my happiness levels i was very miserable actually when i was under eating because you're basically hangry all the time and i kind of built up it was some kind of jealousy towards people that would eat around me i would have a really hard time eating with people because I could see that they were able to eat everything that they wanted in very normal quantities and stop halfway and not finish their plate and it was like how do you do that? <laughs> I didn't understand that. I didn't understand how people could half eat a piece of cake. It seemed so foreign to me, whereas now it, it makes total sense. If you give yourself the permission to eat whatever you want, you really don't necessarily want the whole piece. Coming back to the question, mood swings, absolutely, and that has changed tremendously since I've just, I'm not hungry anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. So I got a question that says, are you 100% happy with your post-recovery body? This comes back just to self-image and body image in general. I don't think it really has to do with recovery or not recovery, but to answer the question very shortly, I'm extremely happy with where my body is at. Am I 100% happy all the time? No, like I think that that's such a hard standard to live up to. I don't think anybody ever feels like that. Even the most gorgeous men and women probably don't feel like that 100% of the time. I'm just happy that I'm well you know i'm happy that i have my period back and i often forget that that was why i wanted to start in the first place so every time i have a down day or i'm like oh i feel like this or oh, i feel like i look a little bit puffy or i just remember that i've made such an incredible change in my life and i'm so happy to be healthy and to have energy and to be in a good mood and to be able to move and to be strong every time that you have like a down day just remind yourself that it's okay to not feel a hundred percent all the time about yourself but don't beat yourself up about it either okay this is a really good question i find and that i wanted to address in regards to period and stuff were your cycles normal straight away or did it take a while it definitely took a while and even if you look back at my first videos you can see that I talk about the fact that my periods aren't that regular in the beginning it took me about five months to start getting it very regularly I've talked about it before I use this app called flow and it just permits me to know when my periods gonna start and it's very accurate to be honest so I know to prepare myself if I know that my periods coming up I also feel it very much the PMS symptoms are very real and that's something I could definitely go into in another video since, I mean, I told this in my story video, I took the pill for a very long time. So the last time that I had PMS symptoms that were natural, meaning without any hormones or anything, was when I was much, much younger. I didn't remember what PMS symptoms felt like. And I can tell you that they're very intense. And that's still something that I'm learning to deal with because I get so moody before my period and usually I'm like, I don't know why this makes me so sad or why this makes me so frustrated. I get very pent up in my feelings right before my period and that's still something that I'm learning to deal with and that, um, yeah, trying to figure out. But I'll go into it in another video if you want. So that's it for today. I hope it went over a few of your questions. If you have any others, please leave them in the comments once again. Please like and subscribe. I am so excited to be back. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.